Now, I'm gonna show you guys a portal that we put together, which is a demo. This is a Dunder Mifflin, right? It's fun. This is in the context of maybe what Jim or Dwight might be doing on a daily basis. They're inside sales. They can log into their portal using their Smartsheet login. Everything that you see in this portal right now is in the context or specifically filtered to me. You might see that there's some sheets, reports and dashboards in our space that track a bunch of different deals for a bunch of different folks. But when I log into this portal, all you'll see are my activities, right? If I click into this activity tracker, I'll see three deals that are, that are filtered down to this week for me. These are my urgent tasks that I might need to follow up on. This demo is showing kind of a deal tracker that I can close, win or close, lose an opportunity. We can also, you know, update these widgets to be approval trackers or taskers or requests. You know, we can change these buttons. We can change the data that flows through here. Basically render the information that's coming from the sheets and show anything here, right? And you know, as Zabe mentioned, the dashboard portal that you're looking at right now, I'm logged in as myself. So all the information you're seeing is filtered down to me. As Zabe mentioned, we don't capture any data or store any data. All this data lives inside a Smartsheet. We're simply using Smartsheet as the data source to populate this view and give that user a more user-friendly centralized hub experience. All these portals are multi-tenant, which means you can have several of your Smartsheet solutions roll up into this one dashboard and show that user specifically what they need to do in the context of their role at your organization, right? So if I'm Jim from Dunder Mifflin, I can see that I have my orders that I'm tracking. I can see requests that I've made to the organization. I can see updates or announcements from the organization. I can see a list of popular helpful articles that might be linked to individual rows in a Smartsheet sheet. And I can also access a service catalog, which I'll show you in a little bit is also a Smartsheet sheet. All this data lives in Smartsheet. We don't store it. We don't back it up. We just display it. Now, first things first, I'm going to jump into a service catalog. So before I jump into that, I'm going to show you guys the back end sheet that is driving this. So, you know, you may be familiar with some of these types of catalogs where it could be a form drop down that says I need to request support or service for this particular item. It's in this particular group. Here's the reasoning behind it. Here's the, uh, the other information that helps support that request. Right. And then on the Smartsheet side, you can have a lot of workflows. You can have a lot of dashboards in place to show reporting on service level agreements, you know, ticket fulfillment, things like that. Right. We don't want to take anything away from Smartsheet. The power lies within Smartsheet. Automations lie within Smartsheet. Data crunching lies within Smartsheet. Visibility into that data lies within Smartsheet as well. Work can still be performed through those automations. We just want to extend the reach of these useful business apps into users' hands by creating more friendly UIs. So now, instead of having a sheet that shows a list of items, a user can simply browse to a directory of a catalog of items that they can request service for. So in this example, I think that this is just showing IT and HR services. If I filter this down by HR, you'll notice that I'm using a category filter down here. And I'm also showing some of these items that are basically filtered down to in onboarding. If I want to filter down to onboarding, I can select this. I can also view this in list view. I can click into employee onboarding and I can see the, the items that are flowing through from my sheet directly into this view. All of these views are fully customizable. You can design these to look however you'd like to show any specific information you'd like. You can customize the descriptions, the labels, and then have all that data flow in from Smartsheet. Additionally, a user could submit a request. Let's say I do need some assistance with employee onboarding. Um, assistance with employee onboarding. Um, if I'm this, some of these widgets on portals can be public facing to users inside of your organization. So they don't have to log in. In this example, I am actually going to pretend that I'm not logged in, right? So I'm going to submit my information, my name. If I was logged in and I specified this portal needed to require a login, I could do that here. I need this completed by end of week. I'm gonna go ahead and submit this request. 
and that submit that request has been submitted. Um, I'll browse back to my home page and you'll see on the right hand side my new request is being tracked in my portal. So now that I can view some of my requests here and then in the Smartsheet side, I'm going to go back to that tracker sheet. So any submissions that come through will show us here, right? So now that ticket is submitted and whoever is managing the requests on the Smartsheet side or on the admin side, maybe through a portal specific to internal service, service users, um, they can see that new sub submission come through and some context, who made the request, and then some other information. And if you have SLAs behind the scenes, you can certainly support all that with these sheets as well. All right, I'm gonna go back and click into this task. So from my portal, I can see high level information on my ticket, right? This is that request that was made. Let's say I'm a user and I'm curious. I wanna say, hey, what's the status of this request? I'll submit this. And now, as I mentioned, we don't take away or add to Smartsheet we're using Smartsheet. So now if I click into this ticket, you'll notice there's a new comment. So we are taking advantage of all of the Smartsheet features to really empower our teams to get the work done with the tools that Smartsheet brings to us. So any conversation that's made on this row is shown in the conversation pane in this widget. So we're really following best practices on how to provide support and how to drive conversation, collaboration, and you know, close out on some of these activities. So if I'm in here, I can provide an update and saying this is currently being scheduled. I'll submit this response and I'll navigate back to my portal. I'll refresh it and you'll see that now my response has been captured from the service side, right? So this is being currently scheduled. Great, thanks. Um, as a user, I can track this and I'll be notified of closeout, but then also on my main portal screen, that ticket will fall off once it's been closed out. On the admin side, if I was managing this from a portal, I can also use my simple tracker to basically close out any ticket requests once they're completed. Or if I wanna manage this on the Smartsheet side, I can simply close this out here as well. I can also take advantage of any workflow automations on the sheet level to basically flow those tickets down and manage that work that way. That covers some simple catalog and request tracking. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into this order sort of widget that you're looking at here. So now if I jump back into Smartsheet, you'll notice that we might have a pretty robust dashboard that shows sales activities in the organization, right? And it's got a report that pulls in sheets that has sales stats by individuals, by people, by reps. Um, if I click into a sheet, you'll see that there might be a few deals that show up here. There's a bunch by people, there's some dates, there's some probabilities, there's some closing. Now in this demo, this is a field sales tracker, but this could really be an approval widget. This could be a daily task tracker. If I wanna click into that to see the list of activities currently for this week, I can see that my items are filtered down and I can click into view this. I can see some basic level information and some notes that I may have had captured on this opportunity. If I wanna say this deal has been received, I can come back here and say, all right, the customer provided payment today. I'll go ahead and capture this note and I'll mark this as closed one. This is gonna update that item, remove it from my daily list of activities and I'll move on to the next one, right? If I jump back into the sheet, you'll see here that this activity has a comment. All right, the customer provided payment and closed one activity just highlighted it, updated the sheet in real time to close that activity out, which will then flow that data up to my dashboard, right? Seamless. Now the user doesn't have to touch Smartsheet. They don't have to move a deal through a pipeline. They're simply managing all of their work from right within this portal. Additionally, we provide a bunch of different templates and a bunch of really cool things on the portal side to provide visibility into sheets that might have many different use cases. Uh, I'm gonna actually switch over to the back end now to show you guys what portals look like from an administrator side. So I'll go ahead and click into my demo portal and portals are driven by what we call modules and modules are basically sheets. Sheets are the source of truth, right? We have a sheet that could act as a catalog like you saw in that service catalog, or you have a sheet that might be a capture sheet, like that tracker sheet where we 
capture any submissions and track status on them. We give users the ability to manage those artifacts by basically giving them a module sheet manager. Once you identify what sheets go into making up that quote unquote module, we give you the ability to turn on or turn off columns. So similar to like a dynamic view where you want to share something out, but you don't want any sensitive information to be leaked. We do the same thing here. If we want to prevent any of these backend sheet columns from being displayed in the portal anywhere, we can turn those off. We can also identify contact type that can be used for, you know, system level matching to users. And then we can also specify which columns we want to use for that drop down filtering like you saw in the service catalog. So in that example, you saw there was a category and a subcategory drop down. Those are identified here. Additionally, with request trackers, you can do the same thing. So you notice that ticket that I submitted from the catalog gets submitted into a request tracker sheet. We can also use the data from that request tracker sheet to populate widgets on the dashboard to show that user data. This is where we can manage the visibility on all those different items. Another component inside of a module is a form. Now you can use our form builder to generate a really simple form, or you can use an external link and maybe paste a Smartsheet form that's more specific to your use case in the event you wanna do that. The benefit to using our form builder is in, if your module has an output and an input sheet, you can map data from one to the other. So in the example of that catalog, I have a tracker that submits tickets to, I can pull data from the catalog. So when I was on that ticket page, I can pull data from that and map it to a column in my tracker sheet. So I can do that here. I can enable or disable widgets or columns rather. I can drag and drop to reorder them on the form, but then I can also map to that other kind of source catalog type sheet, right? So this catalog entity will be mapped to the catalog in the request sheet. Those are basically the core components of how to manage modules. I'm gonna switch over right now and show how pages are built. So, so similar to the user experience that we provide with portals where we bring the solutions and the problems that are solved with our Smartsheet tool set into a portal to make them user friendly where we don't have to require our users to take technical training to understand how to interact with the tool. We want to bring that same level of user friendliness to portals and how we build them on the back end, right? So we've developed this row and column type structure with a simple drag and drop with the user in mind, really. So you don't have to learn how to build this stuff. If you wanted to drag a widget to a new column, you can do that quickly and easily by just dragging and dropping. Additionally, editing column width and you know, widget width and all these different items to work on mobile, desktop, or tablet. You can do that quickly and easily here if you wanted to change the structure of the page. And then also we provide you a, a small library of about 11 different widgets that you can use to display data from Smartsheet. So as previously mentioned, we don't store any data, but these widgets connect to the sheets through that module that we just covered to pull data from the rows to then display them on the portal side. These widgets are built for specific cases, right? So we, we, we do have tables, widgets, forms, activities. I'm gonna go ahead and build a new activity widget. So at first glance, you'll notice that it's not loading any activities because I need to select a data source, but I can title my widget. I can say list of tasks. I can change a really quickly. I could pick a different background color. I can add icons, text color, description, some simple classes. I can then come down here and select a data source for this. I'll select request management and maybe my tasks are related to that tracker that I'm, I'll select a detail page that these will pump into. And then once I select my request tracker data source, I can then see the columns that are coming from that sheet. And I'll be able to select a title column. I'll be able to select a description column, which I'll basically say is comments and notes. Submitted column will be request date here. An action column will just say status. Next, we have the ability to style these to, to match anything. So if we have special brand guidelines, we could specifically style a widget in this case, or we can style the portal at large to make that portal match maybe our corporate website or our other service portals that we have in the organization. Custom actions for this type of a widget would allow us to add some buttons that might provide a function to a task. If we could add a button that might update a status to close it out or to add a blocker or anything we'd like. And then jumping into the filtering for widgets, this is basically 
filters that get applied so that we know how to display data. You know, at a very high level, we could filter it down so that it only shows the person who's logged in would match that contact column for request or email. So similar to that Dunder Mifflin use case that I showed, you only saw my requests and my tasks. This is a similar concept here. This is how we would do that. Time-based filtering, we can select a couple of dates and that would filter down based on the create date that we identified in our module manager and only show dates within a specific range. And lastly, the completely flexible source sheet filters. So this is similar to what you might see in a report builder where you can stack filters, you can group filters by different operators and or operators. You can select columns, you can say catalog ID, um, uh, well, that was a rough one to pick, but let's say request title contains um, new. We could filter down so that anything that might have a new in it or something more specific would be urgent, right? We can say any title that has an urgent one can show in this widget so we can have really quick visibility into urgent tasks that might need more attention. That's a really quick overview of this page builder and adding a widget and selecting a data source. So the page builder is very flexible and allows us to nest pages, to have child pages. It's a really great tool and we also provide modules. So with modules, we also have the ability to add pre-made templates that we've identified from best practices just from all the years of doing this kind of work. We give out of the box, we have four templates, but you could certainly pick any of the other items that you're tracking in your account. So you can use these as data sources to populate your portal widgets. If you did select one of our templates and we add this to the portal, it will add new pages. It will add these templates to the, your portal workspace and organize everything in a way that makes it easy to manage. As you can see here, we have some brand new request management list and pages and they come pre-made with kind of the row and column setup. And then I can just come in and say, I wanna have a list widget that's connected to my catalog sheet. And that's how we would build the page quickly and easily. Now. These two components really drive home value to our users because we can expand reach with portals to all users within the organization. We don't have to provide trainings. They don't have to become Smartsheet Core Product Certified. These are intuitive portals that you know bring a lot of value and make management of these work products much easier. And configuration management brings a lot more value to us as the developers on, the, on these solutions, where now we can collaborate better and more effectively with our team track changes, maintain documentation, and then also have that visualization of how our solution is made up as a whole. So we really find that these do drive a lot of value to Smartsheet. And thanks again, guys, for letting us demo you guys today. This has been awesome. And as I mentioned from both of us, um, we're really hoping to empower all of the teams to really drive and bring that true value that Smartsheet has to everybody in organizations of all sizes, right? So thank you very much.